Please, let's pray. Dear God, please be with us in this preaching. Guide us through the Holy Spirit. We are praying in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the final Sunday of the church liturgical year. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday of Advent, and we will start the year afresh as we prepare for the coming of Jesus into the world at Christmas. This Sunday is designated as Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ. A day set aside to express our faith that after all is said and done. At the end of this world, Christ's kingdom will come and his reign in our lives and the entire world will be complete. But how does one know if I, you, he or she will be a part of the kingdom of Christ? How does one know if one is a part of that kingdom even now? Our gospel lesson for the day is the answer that Jesus would have for us. In the 25th chapter of Matthew, Jesus shared his vision of what the final judgment will be like. You might call it heaven's examination for one soul. You might ask, why an examination at all? If we talk of God's grace and mercy, why not just include everyone in God's kingdom? For the same reason, an audit is done in business to test the accuracy of what is told to be true. It is not just a matter of being nice on Sunday. It's a challenge of what we have done with what God has entrusted to us in our lives. One day, a young monk asking an older monk, Father, if God is infinitely merciful, how can he deprive anyone of his heavenly kingdom? The older monk answered, Why do you keep turning your head from side to side? The younger monk replied, Because the sun keeps hitting me right in my eye and just won't leave me in peace. Then you've answered your own question. The older monk laughed. God doesn't deprive anyone of his heavenly kingdom, some simply cannot bear the light, any more that you can bear the light of the sun. In a few words, God wants all human beings to be saved. However, many human beings themselves are who avoid God's presence. The vision of the last judgment tell us that there is a greater standard than we think or what we are comfortable with. It is a standard by which we will be judged. Here is the vision of the last judgment. Here we are not dealing with hypothetical ideas, feelings, or wishes, but for food for hungry people. Cloud for the needed, and compassion for those who are cut off from the world. In the judgment of nations, the Son of Man will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. The sheep and goats in the vision of the final judgments were surprised. The goats were not necessarily bad people. You get the feeling in their surprise response that if they had known what was needed by Jesus, they could have responded. Just like the virgins who ran out of oil to keep their lamps on. They were not bad people. 
the sheep had no idea who they were visiting, feeding, clothing, or welcoming. They only saw a fellow human being that needed help. And they responded without expecting recognition in return. <coughs> Sorry. Much of our failure to reach those in need is our lack of awareness. Maybe we fail to realize what even the smallest of effort can do for the desperate, the hungry, the homeless, the imprisoned, and the stranger. Quite possible you already know the following story written by unknown author. One day, a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a figure in the distance. As he got closer, he realized the figure was that of a boy picking some things up and gently throwing them into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked him, What are you doing? The boy replied, Throwing a starfish into the ocean. The sun is up and the tide is going down. If I don't throw them back, they'll we die. Son, the man said, don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and thousands of starfish? You can't possibly make a difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish and threw it into the surf. Then, smiling at the man, he said, I made a difference for that one. I made a difference for that one. <clears throat> yes. Yes, maybe our failure comes from not even being willing to start since several issues seem so big. Notice, the vision of Matthew doesn't say the sheep reach everyone, but they did reach someone. Our gospel today, yes, our gospel today reads, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Literally, you gathered me in. Literally, you gathered me in. They are truly strangers in our midst. Yes. How it is so ignore them or blame them for all the country evils. It is so easy. We must be cautious. I am, I am, I am uh, talking with you. We must be cautious because according to the politicians' interests, they will say what nationality is supposedly the evilest, the evilest. No long ago, it was said that Mexicans only came to the United States to do evil, to be criminals. I am Mexican, yes. I am Mexican. I am still Mexican. I am Mexican. Those words were spoken so irresponsibly, so irresponsibly, hurt me and my wife and many foreigners who are not evil people. As we said, the goats in our vision good, in all likelihood, even being guilty of not even seeing the stranger. The challenge is not only to see them, but to see them as a brother and sister. The challenge is to see Christ in the strangers and to gather them in. Our faith is a challenge to get out of our comfort zones. 
Many people are not comfortable with the stranger. Well, we must find ways to reach those in need in our world. In fact, as you know, the history of Thanksgiving Day is a story where the original peoples of these lands welcome strangers. Thanksgiving is a gesture of thanks and gratitude to the Lord Almighty for his blessings and it is also a celebration to show respect towards the original people of these lands because pilgrims could not have survived without the help and compassion of these lands' original people, the original owners. Did you know, did you know that many of the original inhabitants and owners of these lands in our area in Wisconsin, the Kikapu, were forced, were they deported to Mexico North? Mm. I am currently reading the book The Mexican Kikapu Indians, whose author is Felipe A. La Torre and Dolores L. La Torre. Fair, very fair is to acknowledge, think and apologize to the Kikapu peoples, the original owners of these lands. Mm. Being a stranger in a land that is not yours is not easy. Many of your parents, maybe your grandparents, know it or knew it. Four years ago, when I was pastor in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, I had two-hour radio program in a Spanish language that was broadcasting locally every Tuesday afternoon through the Wisconsin Public Radio. The name of the program was Hello Sheboygan, We Have Hope. I share hope, positive thoughts, Christian music, and some advice for the immigrant community. The Hispanic community knew the program. Even people began to recognize me. For example, people sometimes recognize me for my voice in stores. I receive telephone calls from the public to greet and cheer me up. Still also in that time, I received some phone calls where I received insults, basically because of my Mexican origin. In one week, two tires of my car were vandalized in the parking lot of the church. Both were destroyed with knives. I remember that a person in the Walmart parking lot began to insult me, yelling me to go back to my country. I had not done anything. I was just walking. At that time, a group of young people from their car insulted me because of my Mexican appearance while merely I was walking down the street. These events occurred because a politician was sharing a racist and hateful message against Mexicans. Unfortunately, there are also people with quite limited criteria and information Besides, they are also racist people. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's the truth. They were difficult times. But I decided to continue with the radio program and my pastoral ministry. I was sure that I could get ahead with God's help, but I did not have money to buy the new pairs of tires for my car. However, I received a tremendous blessing. One Saturday afternoon, some knocked on the back doors of the church personage, faced with the anti-Mexican atmosphere, I opened the door with some fear. I must admit, she was on one lady of the church with her husband and her child, 
who had arrived to visit me and brought me a couple of new tires for my car as a gift. They were authentic angels for me. I was the stranger and that wonderful family welcomed me. We must make sure that our care for others is expressed in tangible ways and begins to change lives. This family of the church did not change an entire community's life, but they were a great blessing for my own life when I needed it most. I was, I was the starfish that the child had returned to the ocean. In the final judgment, we will be judged not by what we know, no, but what we have shared with others. Both the sheep and goats will be judged not by their creeds, but by their deeds. Our faith in Christ should lead us to do good things, good things, especially for those who need it most. A lot of times, instead of finding how to serve others, we expect Jesus and others to serve us. But the Gospel in this morning teaches us that the purpose is not to feel good, but to be good. I repeat, the gospel of this morning teaches us that the purpose is not, not to feel good, but to be good. Of course, in serving God, we should feel good. But the main objective in believing in God is not that we feel good, but we too be really good persons, doing good things, and in doing so, we feel good. What is the purpose of being Christian? I repeat, what is the purpose of being a Christian? It is not to feel good. It's not to feel good. It's not the purpose, but to be good. It feeds the hungry, gives water to the thirsty, welcomes the stranger, dresses the naked, helps the sick, and visits the prisoner. The church is not an entertainment center. No, the church is not an entertainment center or a place where we participate, of course, if it is not hunting season, or if we have free time. By the way, I, I am all, I always express that in hunter season, I am the dear team. I am not, <laughs> I am not uh, a part of the hunter team. No, in no way, in no way. I am the way of the deers. Uh, no, in no way, I am not part of the uh, hunting team. So sorry. The church exists to proclaim the word of God, administer the sacraments, and remind us that we must do good, especially to those most in need. This Sunday is designated at Christ, the King's Sunday, or the reign of Christ. Please, Keep in mind that Jesus Christ is our Savior, but He is also a prophet, and He is our King, and He is ordering us, He is ordering you, ordering me, to do good. Yes, on Thin Thanksgiving Day, don't forget to be grateful to God and others. And don't forget always to be, yes, don't forget. I am watching at your eyes. At your eyes. Don't forget always to be a good person. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to be a good person. Especially with the less favorite. And with all God's creation. Be good person. With all God's creation.
not just with persons, with all God's creation. That includes the animals, uh, the nature, and more. Yes, alleluia. Have a great Thanksgiving day. Alleluia. Amen. Please, let's pray. Gracious God, you have blessed us in so many ways. In this Thanksgiving, we thank you. Please help us show our thankfulness by the way we live and the way we share with others during these times. Please help us understand that the purpose is not to feel good, but to be good. In the name of Christ the King, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.